What's up guys, welcome back to the Sunday Drive. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to upgrade to a Circle D torque converter in your 6L80 transmission. So welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we are installing this upgraded torque converter from Circle D. Now, you, if you watch the channel for any amount of time, you know I have a video showing how to install the 6L90 torque converter in my 6L80 Silverado. Um, and while this is a good upgrade to do, it can handle more horsepower and it does appear to have somewhat stronger internals. From the comments that you guys have left, it does seem that the 6L90 torque converter still will experience similar failures to the 6L80 torque converter. So hopefully the Circle D torque converter will address that issue. Now I will say that heat is generally the biggest cause of failure of any type of system, um, especially transmissions. And Circle D actually recommends never exceeding 180 degrees or rarely I should say exceeding 180 degrees, but to never exceed 200 degrees with their torque converter. As they said, this will kill the transmission. So it's very interesting that these 6L80 transmissions tend to run very hot, um, usually in the 190s. At least that was what I was seeing before I did some cooling upgrades. Um, but with that said, an upgraded torque converter is definitely gonna last longer than the factory one as long as you can keep those temperatures down. Now with the Circle D kit, um, they include upgraded bolts as well as some glorified washers, also known as shims, um, that we'll be installing if necessary. And we'll show you guys how to do that. One thing to check with these bolts, depending on the stall that you're running, and this is a factory stall torque converter, they do offer higher uh, higher stall options depending on the cam setup or whatever other upgrades you might have done to your vehicle. Um, it's always good to talk to S Circle D or whoever you're buying it from to make sure you're getting the right one for your setup. Um, they may include beefier bolts for a higher stall setup. So you wanna check the holes on the flex plate. You might need to over drill them slightly to accommodate the larger bolts. So make sure to check that before uh, you get too far into the build to realize, hey, I need to get these made bigger. Um, you're also gonna need obviously some transmission fluid and as always, we recommend AMSA oil, especially on these transmissions since they do like to ride, run hot, a good quality transmission fluid could very well save your transmission um, and we like to run with the AMSA oil signature series. We are independent AMSA oil dealers, so the AMSA oil along with all these parts will be linked down in the description and that really does help us out when you go through those links. Um, but to jump back a little bit, the 6L90 torque converter has been working great in my truck for about 40,000 miles. Absolutely no issues. It runs fantastic. Um, I did not need to do any specific programming for that transmit, uh, torque converter upgrade. Um, you also should not need to do any for this as well since it is a factory uh, stall option. Um, However, I do plan to upgrade this in my truck eventually around the 200,000 mile mark. This one's actually going into a customer car, but I didn't want you guys to wait another 60,000 miles before getting to this video out to you. So it was a good opportunity to do that. Um, now, discussing heat in these transmissions, right? So these transmissions run very hot from the factory. There are two upgrades you can do. One is a uh, modification to the thermal bypass, either with the shore cool uh, kit, which we have a video on and I'll link above, which has dropped my temperature significantly. I'm usually now running in the 160s rather than the 190s. Or as another option, you can do the Mishimoto front mount option, um, which adds a larger cooler up front. And I would recommend if you're gonna be towing a lot, if you're not, I think the thermal upgrade or the thermal bypass upgrade is gonna be plenty sufficient for you. At least it has been in my truck up in the Northeast. Um, but without any further ado, let's get into what it takes to get this installed so you guys can have a transmission that lasts you a long time. Now Circle D recommends pre-filling your torque converter with half a quart of fluid. Um, you're obviously going to need to do a full fill cycle on your transmission and we have a video showing how to do that. Um, so don't just add your half a quart here and think you're good. You are going to have to add it a lot more fluid to the transmission. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. Now, just like a oil filter, you're not gonna be able to pour this all in at once if you're pre-filling. It's gonna wanna soak down in there. So I'll try to pull this out. We'll see if Pete can see that going down. It's a little bit dark in there, so it might be difficult, but it is slowly sucking that down into the torque converter. And then when you do the actual fill on the transmission after install, you're gonna need to add a lot more fluid in here. Make sure you do not drive the vehicle with too little fluid. 
um, or you're gonna not go anywhere because the vehicle is just gonna be sitting there because this isn't gonna be able to build up the force necessary to actually engage fully. Now this thing is heavy. Um, it probably is a little heavier than the stock one. It feels much heavier than the ones I've pulled out before. I'm not sure how much heavier it may be, or maybe it's just been a while. I'm forgetting how heavy the stock one is, but you can kind of spin this one a little bit and that'll help the fluid go down. Now, I don't think it hurts if you overfill this because again, you're gonna be adding more transmission fluid to the whole transmission, um, but it's gonna make things messier if you have too much in here. You're gonna just having a lot of it pour out when you go to install the new one. So, all right, we're gonna call that good. I'm just gonna temporarily pop that back on just to make sure nothing falls inside there and let's get the old torque converter out. Now you're gonna notice something is missing. We have the engine pulled out of this vehicle because we're doing an AFM delete. It's a great time to change your torque converter, obviously, since the engine's out. I do wanna make a video showing you guys how to drop the transmission and do that torque converter upgrade a more traditional way without you know, pulling the motor out. Um, so when we either do this for a customer in the future, I'll make that video, or when I get to around that 200,000 mile mark on my truck, uh, which will probably happen in a year or two because I do drive a lot of miles, we will show you how to drop the transmission and change the torque converter. Um, but in this video, we're gonna focus on what it actually takes to swap out the torque converter. It'll be the same process whether you're doing it in the vehicle like I am, or if you have the transmission dropped and you're swapping it then. Once you have access to your torque converter, you're gonna take a straight edge along the bell's housing from side to side, and you're gonna measure the delta from the front of the torque converter to that straight edge. So let me get this moved out, make sure we're zeroed. All right, move that a little bit here. Take that straight edge. And let's push this in. All right. So that distance currently is 33.97 millimeters, or we're rounding up 34 millimeters roughly. So we wanna make sure that we have that same distance with the new torque converter from the front of the bell housing. Now I have not drained any fluid from this transmission. I'm kind of curious to see what happens, <laughs> um, how much is actually gonna come out of here. You definitely are gonna have some fluid come out of here that's up in the torque converter, but this has been sitting for a while. Um, so most of the fluid should have drained to the lowest point of the transmission. So hopefully we don't lose too much. Uh, but again, we're gonna be doing a full uh, transmission drain and fill for this customer. So it doesn't really matter how much we lose at this point, but let's see what happens. All right, now this is heavy. So I'm gonna try to do this without breaking my back. I would have somebody ready to take the torque converter out of the vehicle for you. I'm try to get in a good position here. And you don't wanna have it resting on the input shaft. So I was making sure that I was keeping the weight off of that as I pulled out. And now I'm just going to try not to pull my back. Okay. And I'm handing this off. You're gonna to wanna to keep that in an upright position. And we actually didn't lose that much fluid. So I had some pig mats down here as well as a little bucket, but we didn't really lose that much. So um, even without any fluid drains out of the transmission um, and it having sat for a few days, not that much comes out. So I scooted myself up in the engine bay and had Brent hand me the new torque converter, which he did confirm is heavier than the old one, um, as you would expect with an upgraded one. Uh, and I am trying not to hurt my back. so. We're gonna do this as carefully as possible. I definitely suggest doing this with a buddy because climbing in and out of your engine bay, if you're doing it this way, is gonna be very difficult. Um, and again, you don't wanna put any weight on the input shaft. So we need to slide it on gracefully. And it is slippery and heavy. So I'm gonna first get it kind of in position and rest it on the bell housing. All right. My one leg might be in the way here, but let's see what I can do. All right. All right. She's definitely heavy. All right, so let's get it up in there. I'm gonna get my hand underneath. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so I got it into this point. Um, right here, and it's gonna kind of stop when you need to lift up and line it in and push it all the way in there. And that is why it's important to get that base measurement. 
um, so that we can be sure we have this in the full amount. Right now I'm looking at it. I don't think I'm all the way in just yet, but I'll check with the straight edge because maybe my eyes are deceiving me. But right now I think I'm a little bit further out. So we still are too out, far out here. I did confirm. So what you're gonna do is just rotate it around until you feel it slip in that last little bit. And there we go. All right. I actually put that in three times because Pete missed it the first two times. <laughs> um, but I think we're all the way in now. We're gonna go ahead and check with the straight edge, but there are a few um, uh, layers or tiers of that input shaft you need to get through. And as I mentioned, there are three missing splines, one every 120 degrees or three times around the full 360. Um, and that's why I needed to slightly rotate and try to push in, rotate a little more, push in until it fully locked in and engaged. All right, so we're, we're clear. And now let's check that depth with the calipers. All right. Zero to two. Yeah. So that. All right. And it was just under 34 millimeters last time. Right now we're at 34.1 millimeters. Last time I think we were at 33.96 uh, millimeters. Um, so that's definitely within the margin of error. And I'm happy with it right there. Next, you need to connect your torque converter up to your flex plate. Um, now when doing this, Circle D gives you some direction and provides some shims. So now if you need to add a shim, um, the flex plate is normally going to be bolted in this direction with the bolts coming from the rear of the vehicle into the engine and your uh, bolt for the torque converter is going to go from the flex plate into the uh, transmission um, or into the torque converter. And to space this out, you're going to be adding this spacer right here in between the uh, flex plate and the torque converter, right? So again, the head of the bolt is gonna be on the engine side and the washer is going to go on the transmission side of the flex plate. And if for some reason you're adding a lot of spacers here, um, number one, you shouldn't be. Um, something else is going wrong on, so I would definitely double check if that's the case, but if for some reason everything checks out and you're adding a lot of spacers, make sure you have enough meat left on this bolt uh, when you're engaging that into the torque converter. When do you need the shims and why? So you don't wanna have a space that's too large or too big between the flex plate and your torque converter. Uh, so the minimum distance you want between your torque converter is one eighth of an inch. So I have this drill bit just for a size comparison for you guys, but you don't want that spacing to be larger than three sixteenths of an inch. Um, so basically you want it to fall between one eighth and one sixteenth of a space. If it's less than one eighth, your torque converter is not fully seated into the transmission or some other issue is going on, but that's the most likely one. Uh, so you need to seat the torque converter in a little bit more. If it's larger than three sixteenths, you want to add in these shims. So they give you two different shim sizes, depending on how big of a gap you're going to want to add that shim in between uh, your flex plate and the torque converter before bolting it up to close that gap. But with the shim, again, you don't wanna be any closer than 1 8th. So you might need to play around with it a little bit. All right, guys, so we are gonna stop the install guide there since that's the basic steps. We will have the torque specs down in the description for you so you know um, I'll include the torque specs for both the flex plate to the engine in case for some reason that's off as well as the torque specs from the flex plate to the torque converter for you guys. So those will be down in the description. As with any of our videos, if you ever do see a torque spec error, please let us know so that we can get that corrected. We do our best to provide accurate information to you guys, but we are human. Sometimes I have typos, so please let us know if you see an issue. We're gonna finish getting this engine installed to get rid of this customer's AFM, as well as his troublesome torque converter. Um, but if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. As always, please do go through our links in the description. We take a lot of time and effort to make these videos for you guys um, to help out the community. Um, and you can help us back by buying parts through our links so that we can keep making content like this. And uh, we really do enjoy it. So we appreciate you guys and we'll see you back in the next video.